other phones. This is Jason, and we're looking at 59 historical facts that have been verified in the Gospel of John. If you want to do the scholarship on this and do the, your own research, then you can read uh, Craig L. Blomberg's The Historical Reliability of John's Gospel, where this information uh, has come from. And so I would encourage you to read the book and uh, it will be a blessing to you. It's um, a, a good commentary. I wouldn't say I agree with everything by Craig L. Blomberg, but I would say he is uh, an eminent scholar and will be a blessing to you. And I just want to share with you the 59 confirmed historical facts in the Gospel of John. Number one. There were water jars um, used in John chapter 2, verse 6. Archaeology has found uh, the water jars that uh, were mentioned in the same area as in John chapter 2, verse 6. The next issue is as Skepticism. There was a lot of asceticism in the early church. Historically, that means in John chapter 2 verse 8, the turning water into wine is um, an unlikely invention. Archaeology has confirmed Jacob's well in John chapter 4 verse 6. In Josephus, Wars of the Jews, chapter 2, verse 232, we see that there was um, the Samaritans and the Jews were not getting on. And this is confirmed in John chapter 4, verse 9. The word come down describes the way the geography of Western Galilee is described. There is a an elevation um, falling from Cana to Capernaum. So this is verified in John chapter 4, verse 46 and 49 and 51. The words went up describes what would happen if you were going to Jerusalem as it was an ascent. And that is in John chapter 5, verse 1. Archaeology has confirmed Beth Bethesda in John chapter 5, verse 2 excavations that were done from 1914 to 1938. Mm -hmm. um. In John chapter 531, um, the Lord says that his ministry is based on the testimony of the Father, and Blomberg and scholars would say that that's historically true in John 531, because uh, a later redactor would have taken out, wanting to confirm the divinity of Christ, would have wanted to... Um, make it uh, self-evident rather than actually say that it was from the Father. Um, I think that's more of a, a mute theological point. In John chapter 6.15 people wanting to make Jesus King shows uh, that is historically verifiable because we know that in first century Judaism there was a lot of nationalism uh, for Israel. In John 6.18, uh, sudden squales uh, happen very often in the Sea of Galilee. John chapter 6.53, 
the idea that Jesus commands that you with his blood and flesh is something that would not have been made up. John chapter 6 verse 66 the rejection of Jesus by his disciples is very unlikely something that they would have invented. John chapter 7 verse 12 The idea that in John chapter 7 verse 12, some said Jesus was a good man, some said he deceived the people. Uh, these things would not have been made up. Uh, they are genuine historical scenarios because later redactors would have kept those out and just said that Jesus was God. John chapter 7 verse 20. Um, that people said he was demon possessed is an unlikely invention. John eight forty eight. Some people said that Jesus was a some like a Samaritan is a slander that fits the historical situation of the animosity between Jews and Samaritans. Jewish people wanting to stone Jesus. Uh, is historically true because that's what would have happened in his day in John 8 31 and 59 uh, the pool of Siloam has been confirmed by archaeology in John 9 7 authenticity can be seen in John chapter 9 13 39 uh, the threat of the Pharisees throwing people out of synagogue uh, was uh, a likely scenario. John chapter 9 17 the man who is healed calls Jesus a prophet is historically reliable because it shows embellished an embellishment of history. John chapter 10 22 23 um, John chapter 10, 22, 23, Solomon's colonnade is mentioned by Josephus several times. John chapter 11, 18, the distance between Bethany to Jerusalem is accurately recorded in the Bible, John eleven eighteen. The fact that uh, Mary and Martha were comforted by the Jews in John 11:19 shows that it's historically reliable because later on after the resurrection of Christ there was a hostility between Christian and Jews so why would the Christians write something positive about the Jews so it shows historical historically reliable uh, Lazarus burial and the way he was wrapped uh, shows exactly the way first century Jewish burials were in John 11.44 and in John 11.47 we get a, an exact description of the Sahindrin which was what we could found concerning um, the Sadducees, Pharisees and chief priests uh, in the time of the first century John 11.49 and Cyphus was a uh, high priest of that year. We get that from Josephus. <coughs> In John 11.54, the obscure village of Ephraim is mentioned by Josephus as well. In John And in John 11.54. <laughs> Uh, for the Passover there was ceremonial cleansing and we see that in John 11.55 uh, The anointing of people's feet with oil was a common thing in Jewish culture, John 12.3 uh, John 12.13 
Jewish practice uh, celebrated the military victories was waving on branches, which shows historical veracity in the text of John 12, 13. In John 13, 14, foot washing was uh, part of culture. And John thirteen twenty four. Um, we see Jesus, uh, Peter, posing a question to John, to then go and ask Jesus, why would? the writer put that in, there's no reason for, for him to put that in unless it was true. When in the text in John 14, 28, Jesus says, the Father is greater than I, seems to be historically reliable because if John wanted to say Jesus was God, why put that in as well? The use of the idea of Jesus is divine in John 15, 1 uh, makes full sense uh, because the temple gates had a golden vine carved on them and shows the connection of the, the historical times of that metaphor. In the Dead Sea Scrolls, 1QH, chapter 11, verse 9 and 10, we have childbirth metaphor, which is mirrored in Jewish culture in John chapter 16, 21. In John 17, 1, a uh, Jewish posture in praying was towards heaven and is mirrored in that passage. John 17, 7, 8, where Jesus says he got his words from the Father, would not have been put in as a fiction um, because it has historical veracity due to the fact that if John wanted to prove that Jesus is a God, he would not have put that in. A specific name mentioned, Malchus, where he had his ear cut off, is unlike an unlikely in invention in John 8.10. The fact that the name is given uh, shows that people would have known who that person was at that time. Sophia's father-in-law was mentioned, Annas. Um, and this is in John 18, 13. In John 18, 15, the writer John says that the high priest knew him. This would be an unlikely invention. Annas, when he questioned uh, Jesus' teaching and disciples, uh, makes sense because he would have been concerned about civil unrest, etc., in John 18 19. The relative, Malchus, the high priest servant who had his ear cut off, um, would not have been made up in John 18.26. It would have also undermined uh, John's uh, credibility if he would have made that up.
In John 18.28, Pilate is trying to take a middle road between keeping both Rome and the Jews uh, in, in good spirits, as it were. Uh, he'd already upset the Jews quite a lot and upset his authorities quite a lot uh, with some of his uh, strong-handed tactics before um, with, um, with the Jews. So it fits the historical perspective that he was trying to uh, go a middle way. In John 19.12, if you let this man go, you were no friend of Caesar. Anyone who claims to be a king opposes Caesar. Mm -hmm. uh, in Philo's book, uh, to Gaius, uh, 38, verse 301 to 302, Philo uh, shows that the Jews pressurized Pilate in a similar way. The Antonia Fortress in we find in John 19:13 that uh, soldiers did do various gambling games, and uh, it's not unreasonable to think that they did cast lot for uh, Jesus' garments in John 19:24. In John 19.15, we have no king but Caesar. It seems to be historical, reliable. It shows that uh, this information goes prior to AD 70. They would not have said we have no king but Caesar after AD 70. So it shows it's early historical information. The crucifixion of Jesus in John 19, 17, 30 can be found in Josephus, Tacitus, Lucian and Jewish Talmud. John 19, 17, uh, the victim of crucifixion did carry the cross beams. Josephus confirms the crucifixion in uh, the wars of the Jews in chapter 1 verse 97, chapter 2, 3 or 5, chapter 7, 2 or 3 as a, a way of uh, execution that the Romans used. And we also have uh, an ankle bone of a crucified man uh, with a nail spike that has been found, which was found in 1968. In John 1917, the execution site would be outside Jerusalem. In John chapter 19, 34, the water and blood coming out of Jesus' side is exact medical uh, representation that we know would happen today. And John would not have understood the full medical implications of what he was describing. In John 19, 38, Joseph of Arimathea, who was part of the Sahindran, would be an unlikely invention. Why would they mention someone who was part of the Sahindrin? The Sahindrin would have just denied it, so uh, it has the truth of historic history about it. Josephus in his Antiquities 1719-199 and John 1939 uh, confirms that there are spices that were used for burials of that time. 
A demon-possessed woman such as Mary Madeleine in John 20 verse 1 would not be seen as a first eyewitness account uh, in first century Judaism. So that shows that it has historical reliability. Why use a demon-possessed woman as your first eyewitness account? In that culture it would have been seen as crazy. So it has the ring of historical veracity. John chapter 20 verse 15 that Mary thought Jesus was a gardener is something that the writer would not have invented or made up. Rabboni, John 20 16 which is Aramaic for teacher is authentic. It's something that the writer would not have invented. Again in John chapter 20 17 we find um, the words my God and your God is something that a later redactor would not have put in if he was trying to prove Jesus was God. Uh, in John 21 11 the number of fishes that were stated has no theological significance and so seems to be a historical uh, piece of information and would accord with the tendency of some fishermen of that time who would have liked to brag about large catches of fish. In John 21 12, 12 But Jesus' disciples asked Jesus who he was would have been just exactly the psychological uh, state of mind that the disciples would have been in if they would have seen such a resurrection. And so has historical uh, veracity. In John 21, 18, when Jesus tells the fate of Peter, it seems vague to draw any theological understanding. The question is, why would John make this up? So, what I'd like to point out there um, is we've looked at 58, there was 59 but there was one that I'd, I'd left out because I, I didn't think it was strong enough to go in but there are about 58 historical facts or verifications of the, the Gospel of John I think there are a lot more than that actually uh, and I think that as skeptics and as Christians we need to give the Gospels much more respect than our modern culture does. These Gospels had a powerful effect on the history of the West and the East and it's shambolic that as Christians and atheists we do not read these Gospels and much of my work recently has been trying to talk about Gospels and get people to think about the Gospels and to study the Gospels because at the heart of all the debates about Christianity it all comes down ultimately to these Gospels and um, we need to study them and work on them more than we have actually done. Thank you for listening and may God bless you all.